All right, Linux fans, let's move on to part two here of Deepin 20 Beta. And I'll start off here talking about a few issues I've discovered. First of all, the store. So it is a problem. Again, this is beta. They make that clear that this is beta. But you're going to find that if you launch into the store and you stay on home here, it's going to fault out. It should come up blank, or it has for me every single time. However, if you jump over here to a category, it will eventually populate in, although slowly uh, things will start to pop in. Now, once you're in there and you click on something, you'll get some fairly good details. I, I like the way it's laid out and everything, but you see how slowly it populates, and I suspect it's just you know the way their server's set up and um, the speed of their servers. But anyway, the details that you get are very good. You get the version, the size, the last time it was updated, so that's nice to know. Uh, and a brief description. If you click on more, that'll scale down here to, you know, as much as they've got listed on the uh, particular app. Uh, and then you got comments down here, and in this case, we're not seeing a lot. Nice large photos, and the theming in place here. Of course, I've got dark mode chosen, and this is probably the best theming in recent memory of any distro. Consistent theming. Uh, throughout. But anyway, this is kind of an issue for them. But the solution that I have found is simply to install Synaptic Package Manager. So we'll go ahead and launch into that. And you'll see that the theme stays right there as it should. Dark mode theming that looks just like everything else with the exception of what you got on your desktop. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but everything I've done within Synaptic works great. No issues there. The speed seems to be uh, just fine and there might be an app or two that's a little slow installing but uh, otherwise this kind of solves the store issue uh, so from there uh, let's talk about another issue I had which was Voco screen I had that installed could not get that to record it would launch it just would not record uh, that's okay I installed OBS which I'm recording this on and it works better anyway but just be aware of that if you use Voco screen that uh, there could be a problem there and then Tony from the channel made mention that he was having Wi-Fi issues. He tried this earlier, I think, when it first released and wound up with some Wi-Fi issues. So that may be something that you'll run into. I've not had any issues there myself um, because I'm direct cable in. Um, maybe I'll turn this off and, and then try Wi-Fi later and report back. Or if you're having issues, please share with, uh, with the channel. All right, so that was an issue. And then uh, the other issue I had, oddly enough, was Chromium, which was installed as the default browser. Mm -hmm. I could not load into or sync my Google account with the browser. You know, get all of my bookmarks and everything. I went into settings. I did everything I know to do, and it would not sync. I couldn't find an option for it. So I uninstalled that and installed Chromium, or excuse me, installed Google Chrome. Get my Chromes all mixed up here. And uh, was able to sign in and sync everything, no problem. I'll try Firefox later. The other area, and it's not really, I don't think it's, it's an issue or a beta bug or anything like that. It's just some of the choices that they've made within the UI. You've got some windows that you can click and drag and scale and resize, and then others that are just locked down. And I think it would be nice to have either or there. Uh, because as you get used to just dragging a window to whatever size you want, and then you come over to another one and you can't move it, you can't change it, it's, it's inconsistent there. Uh, all right, so enough about some of the beta issues. Hopefully these are just beta issues. I don't know that they'll ever really get the store to where it's blazingly fast. I mean, they'll have to make some pretty big changes, I suspect, in order to get the server speeds and everything up to, to uh, really make that populate the way it should. At any rate, let's jump over to the theming side. And I've been playing around here. This is like a cotton candy wallpaper here. And then you've got a lot of transparency in place. We'll talk here about the panel for a minute as well. You've got two modes. You've got fashion mode, which I'm in now, and efficient mode. Efficient mode looks more like your more traditional desktop. And that kind of shrinks things down. I haven't found a, a way to resize this efficient mode, uh, you know, if you wanted to bump up you know, the, the height of the bar or whatever. Now, some of the things I have messed around with, which are kind of cool, we'll go back to fashion mode here, is location. So you can take this from the bottom up to the top or left or right. The implementation is pretty good. Oops, wrong side. Collins, get your left and right. <laughs> All set up here. So let's go back to location. Let's go to the left. 
So the implementation is good here, and it's kind of reminiscent of GNOME. A little, you know, a little bit like uh, the Ubuntu setup. Uh, with the transparency in place, you'll see how this bar changes, and it's just a really cool effect. Um, your application launcher is going to remain up top here. I have not discovered a way to move that to the bottom. Uh, that's where I would prefer it. And actually, I would probably use this setup uh, here just because of the monitor size and everything. It's uh, it's a pretty nice way to have this set up, and, and it all applies fairly well here. So we can expand things out here to look at the different tasks. And let's just go ahead while we're doing this and go to efficient mode so you'll see what that looks like there. I suspect many of you may like this even better. Uh, you can also show, uh, show or choose not to show the bar or choose smart hide, which simply means as you launch into something full screen, then it's going to move out of your way. And then if you go hover, it'll slide back in. So this is the Photos app. Everything just looks so good. It's just, you can tell they put a lot of time and effort in keeping everything cohesive and that gives the total overall desktop just a really good feeling. I don't want to get, you know, I find that sometimes I get too excited about a distro, quite honestly. And I don't realize it when I'm talking about it. But later I go back and I read reviews, or not reviews, but I read comments. And, and it's evident to me where I'm like, oh, maybe I should have held back my excitement a little bit. Because one of the things I've discovered in doing this channel is that my enthusiasm may cause some of you to distro hop and then maybe you're not as enthusiastic about it as I was. And so I started thinking about that, not to get too deep here, folks, but I started thinking about that and I want to like curb my enthusiasm a little bit. It's just something that, you know, I get excited about and I don't want to cause you folks to be like, oh, okay, well, this must be you know, fantastic, and then you get in and you load it, and maybe you're not as excited and you're disappointed, you know. So anyway, I, I'm trying to be a little more cognizant of that is all I'm saying. All right, so let's go back go back to Deep in 20 here. Um, right here you've got uh, a pretty cool feature, you know, with one click where, uh, what, are, what are they calling this? Let's see what they're calling it. Let's go back out here. Let me clear that. And they are calling that multitasking view. Duh. Makes sense. Multitasking view. So you've got another few options here. You've got show desktop. That'll pop in right there. Uh, that's plugins. And then you've got on board, which will show up there. Just so you can see that. So I'm going to turn on board off. And I'm going to actually keep show desktop because I could have used that just a second ago. So uh, what else do we have here? Plugin status. We talked about that and then location if you want to see what it looks like on the top that's actually not bad I used to run Windows 7 with the uh, panel up top like that kind of looks like that actually now that I stop and think about it, it looks better even but kind of a familiar layout there all right let's go ahead and go back to the bottom and we'll go back to fashion mode all right so let's go into some of the theming and I've been in dark mode the whole time, I think, for all the videos. So I'm going to switch over to light mode here. And we'll go with a purple color here. Just to This is way too bright for me. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn the transparency uh, off. Let's see. That's all the way to one. So now you've got a completely white bar there as well as a complete white application launcher. And it, let's at least go ahead and change... Uh, which is a beautiful selection of wallpapers. And I know the wallpapers don't make a desktop, but they've really got a, a super high quality set of wallpapers. So we'll at least make that dark um, just to kind of give it a different look. Let's see what that looks like under uh, some of the different applications. Really, really, really like the file manager. They've done a better job here in just the way things are laid out. It's, it's not quite as sparse. Um, and one of the things you know you can get caught up in when you got an operating system like this that focuses a lot on aesthetics and the desktop sometimes um, 
and, and maybe uh, elementary OS is a good example. Sometimes in doing that, you lose function, okay? You, you lose customization options and things like that. This strikes a pretty good balance. So there are, you know, different settings. You can go in here to the file managers. We, I think, well, we haven't looked at this yet. Um, but I was poking around here, and you've got a good selection of options and things to change up if you don't like what you've got set by default. Good balance there. So nice job on this. And let's just go into the photo manager. Again, the theme just kind of rolls right over. Calendar. And then we'll go back to, let's go back into the theming. We'll go back to dark mode. And we'll choose this, uh, let's see here, let's go with pink. There you go. And we'll keep that transparency off. And you'll see here, totally dark bar there now, as well as the application launcher. Let's go into music, see what that looks like. I haven't added any music here or anything like that. We're going to go ahead and exit. Go back to calendar so you can see that. Uh, let's see here. What else do we want to look at? What am I missing? Oh, I really like this. This date and time, just the graphics and everything here. Again, really polished, really professional looking. And I got to say, good move here in getting you know your settings panel, your control control panel, and everything all here with the layout like you see here big improvement um it was cool you know in the beginning to have everything over here on the right and you slide down but the navigation there and everything it just wasn't super smooth it you know you sometimes would lose your way and that kind of thing here this this keeps it all in one area and does a really nice job uh, with displaying everything we'll go back into display go to brightness scaling refresh rate this is their deep in cloud account uh, for your accounts here. You can go in and set things up, change your your avatar there, change your password, set up your default applications. Let's go ahead and look at a few few more things. Calendar again, music, photos. It's fast. It is snappy, and I have not turned off any of the effects or anything like that. Let's see. Let's open a few things and see what we get. So not not bad. So two desktop setup. Scrolling with my mouse wheel right now just to go from one desktop to the other. Let's see if we get any effects in rotation, which we're not. Go back there. Pretty cool. All right. What have we not looked at? Let's just go ahead and roll through a list of apps set up. So you've got categories over here. So you jump right to computer videos, music, pictures, uh, right into settings, power options. Let's take a look at that. So you go into one giant category of power options. Shut down, reboot, suspend, hibernate, lock, and log out. So let's go ahead and hit escape there. Uh, and then we'll go back over here. So screen capture, pretty cool screen capture tool. You can go large or click and drag. And then you'll get a pop-up here. They've done a nice job with that. That's one of their own apps. Image viewer we looked at. Deep and draw. Haven't looked at that. This looks fairly simple and straightforward. See what options we've got. Export, save, save as. Oh, one of the other things too, I'm glad I moved over to this. So you can go, if you don't like the dark theme applied to a certain application that is a deepen, deepen application, you can change that up on the fly. So individually. So you get a little control there. And a good example of that, let's say, um, well, let's go to video, for example. So let's go to video. Where were you? Movie. All right, let's go to movie. So if we had a white theme in place and a really light desktop and everything. But on the movie side, when you're watching a movie or if you're looking at a movie, sometimes you want this all to be dark. It's just better within a movie. 
So then you would have the option or should have the option to go in and individually just change this to, to the dark theme, which is a pretty cool setup. Also, the window corners all rounded and look nice. It just it classes things up. All right, we'll keep on going here. I'm bouncing around too much, folks, but let's see. Calculator, that's a deep in, man, that looks great. It's a calculator, but it looks great. Uh, let's see here. G parted is set up. VLC was set up. Cheese. And there's package installer. Oh, for GDEB. Okay. That's DEB packages. And this is based off of an updated version of Debian. I have to actually, let's go in and take a look at that. And it's also got an updated kernel. So let's see here. What have we got? We're at kernel uh, 5.3. And it's not telling me the version of Debian. I should know that because I read all about it. So you guys can all correct me. Uh, but anyway, it's uh, more recent. Got cheese, archive manager, a font manager. Got a decent selection of fonts. I haven't gone through everything. Print manager. No printer set up. Let's see if it'll find the printer. Let's see if it'll find the brother printer. There it is. Popped right up. That's nice. And even in the printer settings, you saw the theming was in place. Trash, computer, simple scan is set up. Got a manual here. Even the manual is themed. Man, that's nice. Nicely done. Oh, and I found, too, the, the actual welcome screen, uh, which is what you see when you first load in. And this you can't change, but this gives you that video I showed you in the first video. Um, so you've got the introduction video, and then you've got desktop mode showing you the two modes to choose from at startup. Running mode, you've got effect mode and normal mode, turning off the effects, and then your choice of icons that you can step through uh, here as just a quick way to get your system set up. I haven't tried the Bloom Classic Dark against what we're working with, but I'll go ahead and apply that. And the Bloom uh, icons are really nice. And you got Breeze, Breeze and Breeze Dark, Oxygen, and Papyrus. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. I've had a great time kind of going through and setting things up. And uh, maybe we'll wind up doing another video and getting into more details as I get to spend more time with it. If you try this, hope you have fun. Um, it's, it's pretty interesting. So it's, uh, it's certainly one to keep your eye on, especially for uh, final release. All right. Thanks for watching.